Can everyone hear me clearly, yeah? Mm-hmm. Imam Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned an incident from a man from the Salaf of Salih, where he had a situation in which he was with his companion one day, and he was crying, and he was crying a lot. Crying uncontrollably. The man who was his companion, he asked him and he said, why are you crying? The man who was crying, he said, why are you asking me? He said, maybe I can take a benefit from this. Maybe it can be a reason for me to cry as well. He said, the reason I'm crying is because Allah, He promised to put me inside the hellfire for all of eternity if I disbelieve. If Allah was to threaten me with being inside of a toilet for eternity, He said, I will cry, let alone for the hellfire. His companion who was with him, he said, is this a rare incident to see you cry in this way? Because he's crying profusely, uncontrollably. Or is this something that is quite common for you? He says, this happens to me all the time. To the point where he said, I'm about to go to sleep. I can't sleep because I remember the hellfire and I start crying. To the point where I'm about to put food inside of my mouth. I can't actually swallow the food because what? Because I just start crying He said to the point where I'm about to have intimacy with my wife And I remember the hellfire And I can't even be intimate with her because I'm so scared To the point where my wife And my children Are so stressed because of my constant crying My wife says Woe to us We've never seen any good from you The reason I mention this brothers is because obviously You know Alhamdulillah we had a nice meal We had a good time I think today was generally a good day you know, we went quad biking, we had some fun. But we can't lose sight of the goal and the target. Does that make sense? Which is that um, we're here for an objective and a reason, which is to worship Allah. So that we can earn Al-Jannah and we can, inshallah ta'ala, be safe from the hellfire. Does that make sense? So, the Salaf of Salih, when it came to the hellfire, were a lot different to us. They had so much certainty. Of course, we all have certainty, but their level of certainty was so great. That some of them would hear certain verses and collapse and drop dead Out of the fear Out of the fear, they would literally collapse And drop dead One time Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu walked past A iron smith, you know they, they have a big furnace In which they They take the, the, the metal and they put it in the metal And, they, and then they burn it so that it can bend And when, when, you, when you blow air Into the furnace The fire roars and as Ibn Mas'ud was walking past, he heard the fire roar, he collapsed and he fainted. He said, this was scary enough, the hellfire is 69 times hotter. The fire in this life, Mujahid ibn Jabrin, he said, the fire that we kindle is so scared of the hellfire that it actually asks Allah, Allah, I seek refuge in you from the hellfire. So the reason why they had this brothers is because the Iman was greater. And the Iman was greater because of the knowledge that they had And the knowledge that they implemented Does that make sense? Um, so for us, you know We just, we laugh a lot We joke a lot We laugh more than we cry The Prophet said If you knew what I knew, you would laugh little You would cry a lot Does that make sense? There's nothing wrong with laughing and having a good time In fact, that's one of the reasons why we did what we did When we took you guys out For the quad biking and the other activities that are still yet to come We're going to have more fun Inshallah But the essence Of why we're here Don't forget brothers Is what Is to Get Al Jannah And save ourselves from the hellfire Does that make sense? So Inshallah As we head back Towards the hotel uh, Maybe it would be nice to Ponder Inshallah ta'ala, Over this We had some good time We've had enough jokes Maybe for today You don't have to But just Try to become More intro uh, perspective and just reflect internally. You know, you're here, you've all made some progress, Allah and Bari. But now start thinking about how is this progress going to be maintained. <clears throat> Not just that, okay, you've upped your levels, that means you've got potential to do a lot. Some of you probably back home would have never imagined that you'd be practicing and doing the things that you're doing now. You probably thought you never had it in you to go pray to Hajjit in the masjid three hours, this, that. You probably thought, how can I do this? So now that you know that you can, who's to say you can't do more? Set a plan 
I'm saying, inshallah, we'll have other days, other times, other moments where we can laugh and joke. Maybe today just do that. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, shadu la ilaha, astaghfiruka, wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum. I have a question for you. From all of my videos online that you might have seen, which one has been the most life-changing one for you so far? Many people told me that it was the video when we gave da'wah outside the Shisha Cafe. And I'll leave you with this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a time will come when holding on to my religion, holding on to Islam, will become as difficult as holding on to charcoal. The charcoals that we smoke shisha with. The Prophet said, try and hold on to it. It burns, you let go of it. The Prophet said, that's what my religion will become like. Is it not like that today? Or perhaps you're from those who said it was that lecture that everyone was asking about, the one I did on the issue of death. Send me back. Please send me back. I'll pray this time. I'll, I'll, I'll dump that girl this time. I won't play around with the girls no more. No more cigarettes, no more weed, no more watching things online, no more talking to the guys, no more music, no more disrespecting my parents. I will pray. Allah, please send me back. Tell these angels, hold me down for a second. Send me back, just, just two minutes, send me back. Oh, let me die with my head on the ground in sajda. Let me die, but Allah said, no. Not be able to return. They will scream, Rabbi Rji'uni. Send me back my master, please. Bro. Or maybe it was one of the other 1,000 plus videos that we have online. Whatever it was, I want to ask you a follow-up question. And that is, I want you to remember and record what life was like before you saw that video. When you were distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now when you're thinking of that and remembering that, I want you to be aware that there are many brothers and sisters who are still living life like that. Far and distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They still haven't seen that one video that's going to help change their life. They haven't seen that one reminder that's going to touch them and bring them out from the darkness of sin to the brightness and the light and the happiness of guidance. But that doesn't mean that there isn't hope for them. They just need to come in contact with that kind of content online. And that's why myself and my team are dedicating the next three months inshallah ta'ala to flooding the internet with as much content on Tawheed and Sunnah and reminders about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as possible. But the issue is that in order for us to reach those targets, we're limited in terms of the resources that we have. We need to hire more people in our media team. We need to also buy new equipment. Now look, I am I'm gonna ask you to support this financially, but I'm not gonna ask you for crazy numbers. For us, we don't need that kind of money. We need little money because we have a team that really believes in this. And the proof is in the pudding. If you see what we've done over the last summer, subhanAllah, you can see that the work that gets done, that money goes to where it deserves to be placed. So I'm gonna ask you, inshallah ta'ala, because you're a person who's benefited from this YouTube channel. You're a person who's benefited from my video. I want you to be able to give the gift of that video that helped change your life to someone else by donating at the link below. And remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, none of you will truly believe until you love for your brother by extension your sister, what you love for yourself. And what you love here for them is what guidance, the way you love it for yourself. So please inshallah ta'ala give it the link below and let's flood the internet with La ilaha illallah.